Hi my lovelies and welcome back. I'm Amy if you're brand new to this channel and today I am going to answer more questions as part of my Q&A series. The first question, I cannot pronounce your name because it's in Korean. I thought the mini book tote from Dior is on your wishlist video last year. Is that bag totally ticked off from the list? And yes, you're right. Um, last year on my updated wish list, I said that I wanted the mini book tote which launched this year effectively. It's no longer on my wish list because I consulted with a couple of people including my essay. Both of them told me that between the small book tote and the mini book tote that they feel like the small book tote is a better value and also a better bag to get which I also agree because the mini book tote as cute as it is um, it is really just like a mini handbag and I have a lot of mini handbags and honestly the construction on the mini book tote is so simple uh, the handles are completely flat like it's kind of like part of the main body but just extended to the handle um, just the construction itself doesn't wow me in any way and plus it's all fabric and for an all fabric mini book tote to be I'm pretty sure it's like 2500 or is it 2700 Canadian uh, it's up there. It's really expensive for an all fabric bag that has no internal pockets, nothing. Uh, even the handles are so simple. Uh, that's why it's totally off my wish list. JLB, I have several questions for you. Have you found the size of the new Wat Chapeau Soup PM? I think it's a good compromise between the supple classic one and the hard one, which is too expensive. Another question, is the Huix airpod case silicone smooth enough to not cling on all the fibers and dust i'll answer your second question first since it's really fast so this is the airpod case that i featured in several of my past videos i love these ones because they are really well made they're from the company Laut, and the outside is a kind of like a silicone material but it's not really silicone it's kind of just like a more grippy material the inside is a hard plastic on the outside there's just a coating that's kind of anti-slip so it's a really good feel when you hold it of all their cases these are my favorite ones plus the colors are so cute so i have the airpods 2 one and then i have the airpods pro one uh, they're all compatible with wireless charging which i do use and so um yeah i really like them they are they don't cling to any fabric or dust or anything. I toss it in my handbags. They don't ever get dirty. I don't ever have to baby it. Um, so yeah, it's not silicone per se because if they were silicone, they will cling to all kinds of dust and everything. But these just, it's just a nice finish. I discussed in my 2020 wish list that the new release from Louis Vuitton, the Boite Chapeau Souple PM size, would be kind of an interesting bag for me but i wasn't sure at the time and i did have a chance to get it unfortunately as cute as the bag was i did not end up keeping it because it hardly fits my phone so my phone will fit in it if i put it in directly through the zipper just going straight like that um, if you go through it like that you have to fiddle around with it to kind of fit in it and that's if the bag is empty so if the bag had things inside you're gonna have a really hard time organizing your things and your phone will hardly fit in it like the phone can fit in it but with a struggle and because the opening the teeth and everything like the zipper teeth every time you get in and out of it scratches you it was a no-go for me it was a really cute bag if you're interested i can do a review on it i do prefer the small size in terms of the design because it's plain on both sides whereas on the regular size the vachetta pocket is what bothers me because it's such a flat pocket i don't even see a use for it and the fact that there is a piece of vachetta there on the bag if you wear it crossbody, it's gonna rub and it's gonna get dirty. So, um, yeah, it just it's just a wrong placement. Like I don't mind it on the straps and everything else, but um, the pocket itself, I can't. I, I I don't like it. And yeah, the hard case one is just too expensive and also hardly fits anything. The next question is by Debbie. 
I want to add a 30 Montaigne this year, but the smooth leather makes me nervous. I'm looking at the grain version. What are your thoughts on this one? The grain leather, what's good about it is that from afar, you can't really tell that it's a grain leather. If you like the bag and if you're just a bit worried about the smooth leather, then the grain leather is a great option. As long as you don't mind the finish of it and you don't mind the look of it. I think at the end of the day, it really depends on whether practicality wins more for you rather than looks. I know some people don't really mind that it scuffs easily, like the, the smooth leather, because over time it gives it this vintage look. So it really just depends on what you're looking for. I haven't seen the grain leather in person, so I can't really be sure of like what I would choose. Uh, but just judging from, I guess, the two options without looking at it in person, I would probably also lean towards the the grain leather just because I know that I'll be wearing that bag crossbody I also want it to be carefree you know it's a nice bag but I also want my crossbow wear so I probably would go with the grain leather as well especially in black the next question is by Eliza Wang if you can only buy one Chanel uh, will you buy new or pre-owned because many people say that the leather quality in recent years are not as good as pre-2010 a pre-love jumbo will be about 5,000 and a new one is 7,000 that's a great question it really just depends on when exactly you're shopping because depending on the season each season the leather finish is slightly different certain seasons the leather is more shiny more plasticky therefore um, some people like that some people don't some other seasons it's more matte and the grain also can be a little bit finer or it could be a little bit larger some people prefer the larger one some people prefer the finer one it really just depends on the season of that leather um, as to the quality of it i feel like it's not necessarily the leather it could also be the craftsmanship i feel like craftsmanship from many many decades ago or even just a decade ago can feel a bit more high quality like maybe um the demand wasn't as high back then nowadays with social media and everybody informing and influencing each other there's a lot more demand because of that reason i feel so fashion houses and companies have to churn out more units just to supply the demand and i think for that reason craftsmanship is where the quality loss is sometimes uh, but that's the reason why I always try to shop in person and I look at the bag itself whether it satisfies my quality control or my standards and if it's okay then I'll take it home if it's not then I'll leave it and I'll come back another time another season perhaps or even look at a separate bag from the same season sometimes that makes a difference as well so it really just depends on when you shop if you ended up going on a season where you really love the material and the craftsmanship of it uh, and whether you're lucky sometimes luck also plays a role in you getting a perfect one or not because um, i do notice the inconsistency more and more uh, and that's why i'm really picky that's why i like to choose my bags in person and really inspect it myself and sometimes i end up rejecting it i actually reject a lot of times reject as in i don't take it home so uh, it really just depends and it also depends on that day whether you're vibing with the item and if you're vibing with the service that you're provided by the essay uh, it really also counts as the whole experience i definitely prefer buying brand new i'm not gonna lie i like the whole experience i like the packaging i like going there i like sitting there i like talking about it i like looking at it i like comparing it. i like you know showing it to my friends taking pictures uh, trying it on so i like the whole experience of doing that and you can't get that when you buy pre-loved so i would say if i were you and if i can only get one i will try it several times i'll i'll go in the store try it on if i still don't like it i might come back another time or even ask to see another one if they have one in in their uh, in their stock um I'll try that several times and if you really can't find one or if you really don't feel good about any of the ones that you end up looking at in person then perhaps going through the pre-love 
route is a good idea. Classic flops do keep their value pretty well, but in general, I still feel like unless it's a really unicorn color or combination, they tend to be a little cheaper. So it is a good idea to buy pre-loved. But with pre-love, you also have to worry about other things. So similar to how you have to inspect the bag in person at the retail store, you'll also have to re-authenticate the bag that you're buying. Um, and I guess you need to have really good communication with the seller. Hopefully they'll provide you with enough pictures, details. Uh, hopefully they have a good reputation with their sales. They both have pros and cons. The next question is by Linia K. I'm afraid of buying the CC earrings with studs even though they are my favorite due to some people saying that they fall out. Have you had any experience with stones falling? I recently posted my entire jewelry collection so if you have not watched it I will link it up here as well as down below for you guys but I basically showed you my entire collection including my brooches, earrings, belts, uh, what else was there? Hair accessories and Personally speaking, I've never had any issues with my costume jewelry. I do take care of them pretty well. I store it in my jewelry box, so this is one of the drawers. And I always leave one of these silica packets inside just to make sure that it sucks up any whatever moisture from the air, the ambient air, so that it doesn't mold and it doesn't get that green thing. And of course, every time you wear your jewelry, you're supposed to always take it out before you shower or you know do any of those things and when you take it out you should also clean it it doesn't have to be super complicated just give it a good microfiber wipe use one of those very fine very soft microfiber just like i take care of my bags i take care of my jewelry too because you do wear it on your body so uh, you have to at least you have to at least clean the post every time after you wear it and also just wipe it down just that you get rid of the surface residue or surface fingerprints on it and that way especially with the silica packets inside it will really suck up all the moisture if there's any in the air um, and it keeps beautifully so personally i've never had any stones fall out i did ask that question to my essay a long long time ago when i bought my first pair of earrings i, I mentioned about falling stones and they told me that chanel had since change the type of glue that they use and that um, these kinds of problems don't really happen anymore i don't really know if it's true or not but personally speaking i've never had any issues like nothing like i've never had any issues with any of my jewelry never had to exchange never had to get repaired knock on wood but i also hear otherwise so maybe you guys can let us know what your experience has been um, I also feel like there's other factors. It can be really humid where you live, so that's why storing it with the silica packets really do help. Um, also your body chemistry. I think some people's sweats are just a little bit more acidic, so it also affects the lust as well as, I don't know, the glue that's the material that they use on it. I really don't know why some people experience fallouts and some don't, but I have not. So. Maybe you guys can comment down below as well what has been your experience with costume jewelry from different fashion houses so that we can all compare notes. The next question is by Eliza Wang. How do you feel about the mini square tone on tone hardware this season in dark blue and pink as well as the trendy CC? The seasonal mini square that they have this season was from the runway and they actually changed it a little bit. On the runway, it looked like it would be a turn lock whereas the actual one from the retail it looks like it's a magnetic closure i don't mind it i guess but i wish that they kept it with the turn lock because the turn lock is just kind of signature of how chanel turn locks are and i kind of prefer it but i don't mind it i guess especially if i don't already have a mini square but since i already do have one then i wouldn't get one it's still a really nice shape it's still the mini square shape apparently it's bigger as well and apparently the the strap is more decent length for most people so um i feel like it would be a great bag as a alternative to the to the real mini square that's more classic uh, but just without the turn lock so i do like it i don't mind the tone on tone actually it just depends if you love the color Personally speaking, I'm not 
I'm not super big on blue per se. I have a couple of blue bags, but I I don't really buy blue that much. Um, pink, I also don't buy that much. So none of the colors really interest me. As for the Trendy CC, I like it a lot. I feel like the compartments are really spacious and I feel like it's a very practical bag aside from the fact that it's lambskin. Lambskin is just one of those materials where I am a bit iffy like it really depends on the texture of the lambskin the lambskin on my chanel 19 is great i'm gonna show some eye candy since i was already talking about it so this is the square mini that i own mine is from 17c so uh, since i already have this one i won't get the new one but if i didn't have this one i would probably get the black one the black on black um now with the lambskin so i have a lambskin chanel bag and this is the chanel 19. it really just depends on the finish of the lambskin so the lambskin on the chanel 19 is a little different it's more shiny and i feel like it's slightly more treated and it doesn't like to the touch it doesn't feel as delicate it's still really soft and really nice um, but it doesn't feel like the same way that the trendy CC lambskin is. The trendy CC lambskin feels more matte. It feels like more scuffable. And that lambskin scares me. This one, it's okay. I, I'm still careful with it, but like, I feel like this lambskin is just a little bit more durable. And in fact, I know that with the other lambskin, you're not supposed to get poured on. I have two lambskin bags, this one and my Valentino Rockstead. And uh, this one I got poured on once and it was fine. I just stamped the excess water. It dried perfectly fine. I did freak out for a little moment because I, I wasn't sure how it was going to be, but it dried perfectly fine, no problems. Um, so this lambskin I'm super happy with, but... The trendy CC one, I'm not sure. I really, I really don't know if I would get one. I just feel like aside from the beautiful compartmentalized design and the beautiful handle and chain and CC lock and just the shape itself, aside from the design itself, basically the material and the price is where I'm a little conflicted. I mean, the price is up there. Um, the material is not... The material for me is more of a unknown. It is a really expensive bag for me to experiment, I find. Like, this one was expensive too, but I, when I saw this lambskin, I felt a little bit more comfortable and I wasn't as scared when I saw this one. That's why I went ahead and got it. But with the C Trendy CC, I was never sure enough about it. Those of you who have the Trendy CC, please comment down below and let us know your feedback. Uh, the good and the bad, we want to know all of it. So yeah, please share with us. The last question is by Fashion Nika. Hi Amy, you've been on YouTube for quite a while now. How has your mindset on luxury goods changed ever since you joined? Of course, I mean in terms of luxury shopping, has anything changed? This was a fantastic question because it really got me thinking and I'm pretty sure anybody who is in my shoes I mean, anybody who didn't have a channel before and then had a channel after how it has affected their way of buying things. When I started my channel, it was more as a sharing with my family type of thing because I, I do live away from my family and um, at the time I started with vlogs. So I, I started as a vlogger, so like as my daily vlogs as well as my travel vlogs. I actually started with a travel vlog and with my Hong Kong travel vlog. So that was the premise of my channel. I, I wasn't sure of the direction yet, but I obviously loved fashion already and I loved handbags and I have an affinity for anything nice. And in terms of luxury handbags, at the time before my channel started, I had a few, but um, I think I only had four or five, so not that many. And over the years, especially I find, especially around the second year of the channel, I did find myself buying more. Buying more clothes, buying more bags, and it was a nice progression. It was pretty organic. Um, 
I was more into LV at the beginning, so I was buying a lot of LV during my first and couple, first couple of years, I think. And then I progressed, dipped my toes into other brands, tried to get into Chanel for a little while, but didn't quite get into it as fully as I am now. Um, so I'd had, you know, bought some Celine, I had bought some other brands. And so I definitely feel like it has affected my way of shopping. Perhaps it gave me more confidence as, as well because the more I talk about it, the more I learn about it, the more um, I watch others as well. It has really given more, given me more insight as well as myself, you know, researching and talking about these things. It has given me more knowledge. I feel like it's not necessarily because of my channel, although it does contribute to my changing habits um but it's also the fact that as you evolve in your career your age uh, and just your taste in general you will it will affect the way you shop for instance before i started my channel i was living alone and i had a lot more bills to pay uh, my car wasn't paid off at the time as well uh, and there was um you know just just a lot of responsibilities and so I was budgeting accordingly and although I was already buying luxury handbags at the time I wasn't buying as frequently whereas now you know my car is paid off and um, you know I'm not planning to move anywhere you know I'm pretty comfortable here and um, I guess that with the fact that you know we influence each other like I watch other luxury youtubers and I'm also myself researching a lot for my own sake as well as for you know answering questions like this I moved on from like coach and then to LV and then um, I still love LV but I definitely do feel that I love Chanel more the style and the designs are more me and I like the material I like how they look on me, I like how they carry, um, they just end up working out pretty well for me just like other people love Dior and they only mainly buy Dior and some people only mainly buy Louis Vuitton and it's just you kind of I evolved because I found out that Chanel is really my style so I guess it did affect me but only because I was evolving myself too. I feel like it's always going to be constantly evolving whether I have a channel or not uh, but definitely having a channel does speed up things a little bit because I wouldn't be as consumed with knowledge and with information as I am now since I have a channel and since I talk about it often um, and so I think it does affect me but just it's not the entire story basically if you had told me five years ago that I would own 10 Chanel bags I wouldn't think that it was possible but that's the thing though it's been a span of five years already and I've been evolving and growing within these five years and I still can't imagine myself with an Hermes bag like a Birkin or Kelly but who knows maybe in the next five or ten or even earlier when I turn 40 perhaps maybe I'll get my first Hermes bag you just never know because when things happen they just happen everybody has their own journey some people also evolve way faster or way slower and it doesn't really matter because it's their own journey thank you all so much for taking the time to tune in again if you're brand new to my channel I would love to have you back so please consider subscribing Give me a like because likes especially are great for us. It really helps us out. And comment down below. Give us all your feedback, good and the bad. And as long as they're respectful, I'm all for it. Anyway, thank you all so much. Have a great day or week ahead of you. And I'll talk to you again very soon. Bye.